Okay, another follow-up video. By the way, if you have questions on videos that I produce, I'm going to start doing a thing where I check the latest batch of them from the previous month. And if I see comments there and questions that make sense to follow up in a video, I will do that in the following month. So I'm not going to go back to old videos, but just the most recent ones, I think that would be super helpful. So on this video about two ways to fix timing issues in Studio One, talking about like just playing out of time, aside from practice, but some practical ways to use the software to do that. There was a question, which by the way, I've been on a fuel kick lately. A few, fuel hemorrhage, so good. Okay, um, let me find the question real quickly. Okay, from arguably one of the best uh, YouTube handles on the internet, Audio Glenn Janeer. I'm assuming his name's Glenn, and that is fantastic. Says, my mentor, for whatever reason, preferred for us not to use crossfades, so he would line up the clips to zero crossing points, I'll explain what that means in a second, which can, on occasion, add to the perception of realism if the edited, of the edited audio. I'm not sure how it adds to the perception of realism. Uh, I'll, I'll try to have snap cursor to zero crossings feature in this scenario and see if I can do it that old method I learned back in the day much quicker. Um, I still crossfade, but I do zero crossing points to extend or blend a vocal together. Super effective. Okay, cool. So the idea is when, when you're editing. So editing is a whole, it's a whole world, right? I've got a vocal here we're going to look at. But editing can be can be challenging, especially when there are imperfections in the audio. So in that in that last video, I showed this kind of number where you take, oh, hang on, I'm on the wrong, wrong view. You take a piece of audio, you cut it up, and then you kind of slide the underlying, whoops. By the way, you have to turn the gain envelope off or this doesn't work. Uh, dur -dur. So you, uh, you slice something up and then you can slide the underlying audio. And when you get it in place, you hit crossfade. Um, sometimes, depending on the situation, that crossfade can be audible. Um, if you're crossfading in the middle of like a, a, a vocal note, for example, you're blending to, that's where it can be tricky. Typically, I'm talking about taking different sections of audio where the crossfade is happening during silence, and it's not a big deal. Here's a specific thing that I want to show you, and, and we'll talk about zero crossings. I'll kind of show how that works, because it's a really good idea. and something that I honestly had kind of forgotten existed in Studio One. Uh, until Glenn Janeer pointed it out. So super handy. So here is a here's a, a vocal. It's mixed, and it's fine, except when he's holding out this final note, there is a like a is a blip in the audio. And sometimes it just happens. It can sometimes be something happened with your computer and the interface or the converter just had a single sample glitch. Sometimes it's mouth noise, like you know, that little popping sound in the mouth. There's all sorts of reasons it can happen. Um and generally speaking, I try to just re-record that section because that's easier than like trying to fix it later. But this is here's the here's the vocal. And I fell to my knees and I cried. You hear that at the end as he's sing holding out the note. And because of the brightness of the vocal and the compression and whatever, that little click click is emphasized. So how do we fix that? Or is it is it worth fixing? First of all, that's a question you should ask yourself. But let's zoom in. Let's see if we can f at least visually find it in the waveform. And I like to zoom all the way in, which, by the way, you can do here by clicking this little handle on the bottom right-hand side. But let's see if we can find where the click is happening. So typically, like a typical waveform looks like this. There's up and down, up and down. And the clickiness is usually something really spiky and kind of out of place. So if we if we just hit play... It seems like it's coming from in here. If we zoom in more, there we go. This right there, this part of the waveform, something went weird and it made it real spiky, which is making a clicking sound. Um, now, in, in I remember this is a, probably shouldn't say this, but when I was a Pro Tools user years ago, there was a tool you could use, like a pencil tool, and it would just literally redraw this waveform and a a lot of times it would fix the problem because you're basically getting rid of this little spikiness that's there. We don't have that, at least currently, in Studio One. However, there is a pretty simple fix. But first, let's talk about this zero crossing thing. What is, what is zero crossing? So zero crossing means this waveform is going up and down. So this vertical, this is a stereo file, so it's a little confusing. But let's imagine this vertical line here is zero. This up here has a volume of a plus number. Down here has a volume of a negative number. Think of it that way. And every time it crosses over zero, zero is silence. 
So up and down, that's how we create a waveform, right? A waveform goes up and down. And whenever that waveform crosses zero, that's a certain moment in time. We call that a zero point crossing. So here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. Now, why is that important? Because at the zero point crossing, the file is technically silent. It is at zero, like zero volume. It's not a pl plus volume or a negative volume, which that sounds weird, but it's at zero. And so the idea is it, when, I, when I edit two files together, if there's a click when, that, when the playhead goes over that edit, a lot of times the solution is just to do a crossfade and it fades one in, fades one out, no harm, no foul. But for something like this, he's in the middle of singing a note. So if I were to cut this out and like move something over, and then fade between them. First of all, the click would still be there because it's in the fade. Second of all, it would probably be audible. So there is a feature in Studio One that I bet you didn't know about. Okay, maybe you did. I had forgotten about it. Under this snap feature. So snap to me typically means snap to grid, which means if I'm like clicking on something, if we come back out here. Um, let me zoom in over here. I was in the edit window, but I'm just going to stay out here in the arranger. Whoops. Turn follow off so it doesn't move right in here, right? It's kind of fun to go find it. There it is. There's the spiky thing. Um, typically, adaptive for me means this. As I move the mouse around, it's jumping to the normal mode for me has been snap to grid, which means it's just snapping to... It's adaptive, so it changes based on how zoomed in I am. But you can see it's it's snapping to the bar lines or the beat lines, right? Here it's snapping to 29.4. There it snaps to like a subdivision of that. So if I'm doing and wanting to move things relative to the tempo, I can. What we're talking about here is actually adding in the snap to zero crossings setting. Now, when you click that, it doesn't change to that, by the way. It basically adds it as another snap Um target if you will so it'll still snap to the grid as well as that you can let's turn it off for now just because it'll make things a little easier now what happens is as we move the cursor as we drag the end of a waveform or as I, I just hover here you can see it's jumping to these zero points any place where that little line is crossing over zero it jumps to it and it typically does it 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 does it on the way up, which maybe is that that's the proper one. I don't know. But the idea here is what if I can just cut out this section of audio in such a way that we can't hear it happen and it just gets rid of this click. So like here's the clicky grossness and that, that up part there looks a little wiggly too. So what if we just came over here and we cut it here and then we went backwards until we found a zero crossing that matched that one. So like this one here. Do you get what happened? So I'm just moving, and that vertical line is showing me where zero crossings are, and I'm using the cut tool here, the split tool, to just cut in those two spots. Now, let's say I delete that section, and for the sake of not messing with anything else further down the line, I, I do a cut over here just so I can slide this back without affecting everything else in the song. And now let's say I just bring this over, and I just lay it right next to it, right? Theoretically, because they are meeting at a zero cross point, this should be as if, as if it's just one single file. And there should, fingers crossed, not be any sort of a click in the audio. We technically have gotten rid of it. So we basically just said one kind of cycle of this waveform going up and down, we've removed. If we slide over, we can see there it is, right? Right there is the thing that we remove, but now it's not there anymore because we kind of slid everything over by one, kind of by one um, wavelength, I think is the right term for that. So I honestly haven't tested this beforehand, so this could not work, but let's just see. When it gets to this point, we'll mark it. Sound? If it gets to that sound marker, does it make a sound or does it not? Let's go all the way over here and let's see. And I fell to my knees and I cried. Ooh, we did it. Because before, it had this kind of obnoxious clicky sound right there. And I fell to my knees and I cried. That click. But now. And I fell to my knees and I cried. I didn't even hear it. Did you hear it? And I fell to my knees and I cried. So there's a couple others of those blips, but we fixed it by just moving it over. Now, admittedly, if I could just redraw that waveform and it solved the same problem, that would have been a little faster. But as you can see, when you've got snap to zero crossing, you can do this pretty quickly. Let's find that other, 
There's another, you can get, you can go overboard with this, but there was another click here. And, and. It's happening right here towards the end. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, clicky, there you are. See, it shows up pretty easily. You zoom in, especially on this view. If you don't zoom in much further, you can easily see, oh, there it is. Let's just select this. Let's do this. Let's turn on Ripple Edit. Okay, so when I select these two zero-point crossings, and Studio One is smart, it doesn't let me select this one because that, that's on the way down. It only selects them on the way up. So when I select between two, it's a full up and down cycle because that if you do two ups next to each other, that'll sound weird. But an up and a down next to each other should sound natural. So if I just press delete, and when we rewind a little bit, I bet you that one's gone too. And, and, and. It did, but then there's another one. There's like three. So the, the, the b bigger picture here, there's probably something we can do in the recording to make it not be so clicky, like maybe backing up from the mic or sync. There's one right here, I think. Let's get rid of that one and see. I'm like rebuilding the waveform, basically. And, and, and. That is phenomenal. So you may be thinking, Joe, who cares? Well, here's the problem. There's another click over here, like when he's done singing. And, Right there, that little, don't care. Because I can just, I mean, A, you may not hear it in the mix, but also I can just get rid of that, right? I can get, whoops, I don't want, I don't want it to ripple edit anymore. Um, I can get rid of it because it's not a part of the sound. And so in the mix, we'll never hear that. So we can go. And I fell to my knees and I cried. Oh, hear my pleas. Easy peasy. So when it's between phrases, like right there, I bet you that is a blip of some sort. We can just get rid of it. No problem. It's when it happens in the middle of some audio happening that it can, that it's really important, especially on a vocal, because vocals tend to be pretty loud in our mixes. Um, that's that's where this comes in handy. Now, this is the kind of thing I only do occasionally. Like I said before, I'd rather just if I listen back on the recording, say, oh, there's a blip right in the middle of that note that I was holding out, let me just record it again. But sometimes that's not possible, or sometimes you just don't hear it, or sometimes it's the mix that makes it stand out more. So the compression and EQ and that you've used has accentuated that thing. Now it's become a problem when before you didn't really hear it, and it's all fine. This is one way that you can get in there and handle it. So uh, snap to zero crossings, a delightful setting that I probably won't have on by default. It's one of those things I will just manually turn on when I need it, but it's nice to know that it's there because it really did just solve that problem. Um, honestly, I just finished up this mix yesterday and I kind of just said, nah, the sounds are there, it's fine. But now that I've rediscovered the zero crossing thing, I'm, I'm thinking about going back and fixing all of them. So such is the life of an audio engineer. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.